Hello and welcome to the another video of Stable Diffusion with Automatic 1111 Web UI by TechLattice.net video series. In this video we will cover complete process of provisioning the Stable Diffusion with Automatic 1111 Virtual Machine Solution on Azure Platform. And once your solution is deployed, we'll see how to start and connect to Automatic 1111 Web Interface via browser. So, let's get started. Open TechLattice Stable Diffusion with Automatic 1111 Web Interface listing on AWS Marketplace. To do so, go to the techlatest.net website. From this page navigate to Products and Support page. Search for Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 product. You can see the product description here. All the details are given on this page. When ready, click on Launch Now on Azure button located at the top. This video is for provisioning the tech latest stable diffusion solution on Azure Marketplace. If you prefer to provision this solution on AWS or GCP, then kindly check our AWS Getting Started Guide or GCP Getting Started Guide respectively. Links are in the description. You can find all product details here. Just go through it. You can navigate to different tabs here and see more about the offer, pricing, and plans. On Plans plus Pricing page, scroll down to see the recommended VM instances. Here in the Publisher Recommendations, we have CPU as well as GPU instances in the list. So this two instances are GPU and others are CPU instances. For optimal performance, Stable Diffusion requires a significant processing power, which is best achieved with a GPU instance. However, if the cost of a GPU instance is prohibitive, a CPU instance with higher processing capacity may be used as an alternative. So for better performance of automatic 1111 interface, we have some recommendations. For GPU instance go with the standard NC4AST4V3 which comes with 4 vCPU 28GB memory configuration. This is the minimum specs for GPU instances. For CPU instance go with the standard B4 meters S which comes with the 4 vCPU and 16GB RAM. For CPU, it's the minimum specifications but more CPU is preferred. Instances with AMD GPU are not recommended. GPU instance will perform 10 times or more faster when processing images compared to CPU instance. Typical GPU instance will take few seconds to render images compared to 7 to 10 minutes by CPU instance, hence GPU instances are preferred. You can select this instances while configuring the VM. I will show you the configuration page, exactly where you need to select the Isentons type, in a moment. Once you are ready to go, click on Get It Now button here. If you are not logged in, it will ask you log in. Azure will also ask you to provide some details on the next page. If you have already provided this information before, it will skip this step. On this page, it will again show you all the offer details. Plans tab will display the details about the plan. What you will get under the specific plan. At the time of recording this video, we have only one plan under this offer. Click on Create button. It will take you the VM's configuration page. Select a resource group for your virtual machine. You can create a new resource group or can use the existing one. Let's create a new resource group. Select a region where you want to launch the VM, such as East US. Keep this settings to default. Make sure to select Standard from the drop down for Security Type. Optionally, change the instance size with number of cores and amount of memory. At this point you have to select for CPU or GPU instance. Click on See All Sizes option. As I already discussed about the benefit of GPU instances and recommended instances. Choose according to your use case. Also please note that, for some Azure subscription, you may not see the GPU instances available on this page. And it will be showing Request Quota option in front of that instance size. In this case, click on Request Quota link. It will start processing. And within few minutes you will get the requested GPU instance listed here. For this demo purpose, I will go with the GPU instance here. Next, select the authentication type as password, 
and enter username as Ubuntu and password of your choice. Re-enter the password. On next page, optionally change the OS disk type. We'll go with the HDD type. Also you can check this option here to delete the disk when VM is deleted. Go with the default network and subnetwork names. As the default one comes with the ports 22, for SSH, 3389, for RDP, and 80, for HTTP, opened. You see this message here, which says, this VM has pre-configured NSG rules. You can check this by clicking on create new option here. On this page, this three ports are opened by default. Going back, you can tick this checkbox to delete the IP and NIC when VM is deleted. Optionally go to the management, advanced, and tags tabs. For any advanced settings you want for the VM. I will disable this boot diagnostics option here. Next, next, and then next, it will check for the all the validations on review plus create. Once the VM passed the validation, click on create. Virtual machine will begin deploying. Let it finish. It will talk one to two minutes. A summary page displays when the virtual machine is successfully created. Click on go to resource link option here. It will open an virtual machine overview page. Now your VM is successfully created you can connect to the VM. After VM launch for the first time, GPU instances will take 5 to 10 minutes and CPU instances will take 15 to 30 minutes to launch the automatic 11.11 web app in the browser. Wait for 5 to 10 or 15 to 30 minutes depending on if your VM is GPU or CPU based and then access the stable diffusion user interface via browser. Copy the public IP of the VM which is available on the VM's overview page and paste it in the browser and then hit enter. And please make sure to use HTTP and not HTTPS in the URL when accessing automatic 1111 web interface. So this is stable diffusion automatic 1111 web interface. We will cover all the GUI features and how to get most out of it in our subsequent videos. But we'll take a quick tour here. At very first, if you want to set up the black theme. Then enter question mark, underscore, underscore. Theme is equal to dark. Click enter. Here we have black theme enabled. The first page over here is text to image window. Provide any text prompt here in this area and click on generate button and wait till it finishes. You can play with the various settings available here and see the variation in the output. You can see various options on this page. We will discuss about them in detail with demos in our next video about Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 features. Output images can be seen in the Image Browser tab. Click on Image Browser and click on First Page to load the images. Image Browser is a type of extension. Other extension we have are Dreambooth which is used to fine-tune existing text to image models. And next on Text to Image tab, under Setting we have Control Net extension which is used to control diffusion models by adding extra conditions. We will talk about all these extension in details in our subsequent videos. All of these extensions are pre-installed in Tech Latest VM by default so that user can get benefited from them. Now let's go back to Image Browser. In Image Browser, click on any image to see its details. On the right side, you can see its details, like prompt used, size, seed and other settings used. Below this, it shows the default location where the images get saved on this virtual machine. In a while, I will show you the steps to access this location. You can directly send this image for processing on other options as input image. E.g. send to image to image tab option here. Try different prompts with different settings and watch the astonishing results it generates. You can also access the SSH to the VM. To SSH to the VM, open PuTTY and paste the IP address and click on Open. Log in as Ubuntu and provide the password for Ubuntu user set during the VM creation. So this is SSH terminal. Now let's see the default directory used for storing the generated images on this VM. The images created from web interface are stored under output directory, under stable diffusion folder. To access this directory, 
you need to connect to VM's graphical environment via RDP. To connect using RDP via Windows machine, first note the public IP address of the VM from VM details page from here. Then from your local Windows machine, go to Start menu in the search box type and select Remote Desktop Connection. In the Remote Desktop Connection wizard, paste the public IP address and click Connect. This will connect you to the VM's desktop environment. Provide the Ubuntu as username and the password you set during the VM configuration to authenticate. Click OK. Now you are connected to the out-of-box TechLattice Stable Diffusion with Automatic 1111 web interface environment via Windows machine. This is the VM's graphical environment. From VM's desktop, you can access the output images by navigating to Home, Ubuntu, Stable Diffusion, Outputs directory. Here you can see, different folders are available like Image to Image, Text to Image, Grids etc. Click Image to Image directory. New directory by the image generation date got created. Generated images are saved here. You can also access the source code of the stable diffusion. It is available under source code folder on desktop. You can learn more about automatic 1111 web UI by experimenting with it. Please check description for useful links and resources. That's it for this video. So, in this video we covered how to configure tech latest stable diffusion with automatic 1111 web interface from Azure Marketplace and we also took the brief tour of SD automatic 1111 web interface. In the next video, we will discuss its features by running demos. Thank you for listening. Thank you.